Okay, now Vivica particularly wanted some framing issues, and I pointed out to her that this was actually quite uh, tricky because there are a number of frames. I had an animated slide that won't work on this system, so you have to take it from me that there are six different framing um, opportunities here, and there are only six examples of how these issues can be framed from the sort of ecological approach through the um, causal web that IOTF developed, the Nuffield ladder of inventions there from doing nothing to um, eliminating choice. And this quite interesting one that the UK has been working with uh, at the government level uh, that sort of divides up opportunities, motivations, capabilities, and puts them into their context for behavior change. These are all behavior change type of approaches. Where do you want to intervene? So there are all ways in which um, countries are trying to frame these issues. But I think uh, I'm not going to try and judge them here now. Each of these framings could, you know, merit a, a good hour. Uh, and they have implications for what you then focus on. So if you're going to develop your culture of health um, view, you need to think which sort of framing you're going to try and do that within and try and get some theoretical framing that works. These are mostly, if you like, static models. They are a sort of description of the structures that prevail. There are also the dynamic models like these, the um, life course approach where you could intervene at different stages and they have an impact on the next stage and the one beyond all the way around, uh, and also the deprivation, um, spiral of deprivation model, which, you know, as health deteriorates, so your ability to work, have an income deteriorates, you eat less well, and your health gets even worse, and so on. So these sorts of cycles and uh, models uh, are needed to, you, you need to think through how you're going to use these. Um, when, as you develop your, your program of work. Okay, um, some of the main issues to be fr framed um, that you're already familiar with are the sort of agencies of change. Are we talking about individuals, families, schools, communities, all the way up to international treaties? Um, about opportunities, as I say, through the life course, from pre-pregnancy through breastfeeding, infant feeding, through to the schools, uh, and then the sorts of drivers of child diet and nutrition and, and physical activity, the environments, the, the prices of food and the advertising and so on. You're familiar with all of these, but we need to think how they are framed, how we set them into a, a framing that allows for action. Okay, I promised to say a few words about the um, uh, policy developments that are occurring internationally. Uh, one of the big ones is Margaret Chan has set up a global campaign, basically, to tackle child obesity. It says that it's a commission to end child obesity, a very ambitious title, uh, launched uh, only this May, uh, intends to have an interim report due in January, although I've heard also possibly March uh, next year, and the final report to go to the World Health Assembly in 2016. It's chaired by a New Zealander um, and an additional chair from Pakistan, Sanita Sanya Nishta. Um, one of its key members that I have had some interaction with is Betty King, who used to be an ambassador, I think, to Geneva, to the UN. Uh, and uh, not only is there this uh, high-level commission, but it has two working groups. The first of them uh, is on science and evidence, uh, looking at sort of epidemiology, marketing issues, health literacy, and so on. Uh, it'll have a scope of work looking at what is out there, um, what might work, uh, what sort of policies are needed, and so on. Uh, and, of course, one of the people, at least one of the people in the room at the moment, is sitting on that, and that's Shariki. So if you want to know more about uh, this working group, please talk to Shariki. There's a second working group coming up. Sorry. There we go. On implementation, monitoring, and accountability. They haven't yet set... The uh, membership for that, some invitations have gone out, I understand, but they haven't yet announced the membership. Uh, and this will look at, you know, how do you actually implement the policies that are going to be recommended from the evidence review and decided by the commission as a whole. So it's an interesting process, and we look forward to seeing what's coming out of that. Only one report so far from Shariki's uh, committee has yet been published. Uh, and That does acknowledge the um, inequities and inequalities issues. It uh, doesn't go into great depth yet. Uh, I'm hoping there will be more coming out of this commission on the inequalities issue, but it does recognize it, and it's important that um, we keep a focus on that all the way through this policy development. Okay, what else is going on? We have the PAHO, 
plan of action adopted earlier this month, just a, a few couple of weeks ago, a week ago. Um, plan of action on child obesity, which is a very interesting document, and it too recognizes the inequalities issues. It proposes a number of quite important population health interventions. As far as I can see, they're not specifically targeted to or intending to tackle inequalities or inequity in health, but they are uh, population-wide, so they will have some impact, hopefully, uh, on all levels of society. Uh, in Europe, we have both an EU, a European Union action plan on child obesity came out earlier this year, uh, and we also have a World Health Organization regional uh, action plan on food and nutrition. And inequalities are mentioned there, so they are featuring, uh, again, not a great deal of specific uh, information on what practically can be done to tackle inequalities, uh, but at least there is a sensitivity to the issue.